Welcome to another video for STAT 420. Um, in this video, we're going to kind of take a big picture look at uh, linear modeling. So we've obviously been talking about modeling, we've been doing some modeling, um, but here we're just going to kind of remind ourselves what modeling is about, what some of our purposes are, and some of the considerations um, that we need to make when choosing a model. Um, so first off, I think it's kind of helpful to think about um, uh, modeling as kind of um, uh, trying to understand a response variable and breaking it down into two elements. Uh, one of them being um, kind of a signal that is going to be explained by some predictor or a group of predictors that we have. And the other of uh, the response variable being kind of this noise that we can't really explain. Um, so if we kind of look at this picture here, um, we can see that if we know um, this one variable, if we know um, somebody's weight, we seem to have slightly better indication of what their LDL cholesterol could be, um, that we kind of see this relationship here as um, weight increases. Um, but we also see that there's also a lot of noise in this model as well, right? So at any given weight, um, I have kind of this much uncertainty approximately um, when trying to kind of uh, predict LDL cholesterol from weight. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that we have this kind of ex um, explanatory power here, that there is kind of this signal as well that's coming through this relationship that's representing kind of this underlying relationship that weight and LDL cholesterol have, even though there's obviously a lot of other things that are going to affect LDL cholesterol besides just somebody's weight. Um, so modeling, as we probably figured out by now, is kind of messy, and there's a lot of reasons why that's the case. Um, so, so one reason is that relationships may just not be clearly modeled with simple relationships, with like linear or even like a quadratic relationship, or these other kind of you know relatively easy terms that we can add. So over here, you know, and we we like to look at these really simple um, examples where we have this clearly kind of linear relationship that looks very constant across the entire range. Um, but the truth is that's not always the relationships that we're working with. They, they can be complicated. Oftentimes, you know, they are simple, but, but every once in a while they're not uh, simple relationships. Um, secondly, the relationship of a predictor to a response may also depend on other predictors. And what I mean by that is not that there's just other predictors that can help um, predict, but that uh, a predictor's uh, relationship with the response may be different depending on um, you know what else is true about that unit of observation. So we're going to see kind of an example coming up where um, you know we might notice that one predictor interacts with another predictor and we might have what's called an interaction term. And so we'll be discussing that more um, in a later chapter. But because of that, because predictors themselves can kind of interact with one another in their relationship with the response variable, it can make modeling a little bit messier when that's going on. Um, relationships may only hold for a particular range of values. So it's not that these relationships that we model are just kind of eternally what they are for as long as the range of this variable exists. Um, they may only really be true for a very particular range. So that can also make models a little bit hard is when we recognize that the relationship is just going to change in some way, you know, once we move kind of past a certain point of values. And then just weak relationships are hard to identify confidently. So, you know, we're, when we have some signal, but that signal is rather weak and small, and it's overshadowed by the noise, it's going to be difficult sometimes to find that signal without having a whole lot of data to find it. Um, so for all these reasons, and honestly more that we could list, um, you know, modeling can be quite messy. So um, the book kind of gives three different um, choices, three different layers of choices that go on when we're modeling. And they're kind of put under these three Fs of family, form, and fit. So family would be kind of the broadest question, kind of like this, you know, this, you know, largest question that we, we start with, and that is, um, what kind of modeling are we doing? And so this class is concerned with linear modeling, which also kind of falls under this term parametric modeling. Um, however, we also recognize that there's other types of modeling. Um, so smoothing is um, kind of an, a, a newer, a more modern approach to modeling um, that's based on what's called non-parametric methods. So, so when I say parametric and non-parametric, 
um, what you can kind of think of is uh, that we're, we have an assumption about some kind of constant model for a particular range of values, right? So we say that this relationship is linear, that the variance is constant and is represented by sigma squared for the entire range of, of this relationship. That, that is more of a parametric uh, approach to modeling where we kind of have this constant um, uh, model and we say that the residuals are normally distributed about the mean with a particular variance. Um, Non-parametric is when we kind of relax those rules and we say that there isn't necessarily kind of this constant distribution of residuals and that maybe the model is a little bit more complicated and we use what's called smoothing techniques to kind of fit a model using um, a much more kind of localized uh, nearest neighbor method. So that's kind of this first question of, you know, when we're fitting a model, are we going to use a kind of a parametric approach with say a linear model? Um, or are we gonna use a non-parametric approach with a more kind of um, with smoothing or something like that? Um, kind of the, the next layer in would be the form of our model. So that gets into things like choosing which predictors to include in our model, um, how to represent them in the model. You know, are we doing linear terms? Are we doing a quadratic term? Do we have interaction terms? Um, do we have to do any transformations on our terms? So that gets into issues of form in our model. And then finally, once we've identified what type of model, which predictors to include and such, um, then we get to fitting, and that's going to be specifically how do we decide what our best guesses are for these parameters that we've defined. So if we're building a model with this kind of um, template with these particular parameters, um, you know, we need something like least squares as a method to decide this is how we're going to find our best estimates. So I've already kind of talked about each of these, but, but just kind of a little bit more about each one in particular. This is an example of that, of that tension between, say, a parametric approach with, say, fitting a line versus a more non-parametric approach where we're doing something that isn't, you know, quite this kind of constant, um, you know, distributionally dependent model, but something that is going to be much more of a kind of a localized fit. Um, so, so over here would be just a very different approach that might be more appropriate in um, kind of some, some more complex modeling context that we don't really get into in this class. So, so this class, we're all about this side. This is where we kind of stay in terms of our family choice. Um, form, so I mentioned a couple things like which predictors to include. I also said something about interactions, so this idea that predictors might kind of depend on one another. Um, so, so often with interactions, uh, it's easiest to think about them when we have categorical predictors. Um, so let's say that we have two categories, uh, like, a, like a categorical variable with two categories that we're using to help predict this response variable in addition to our numeric variable here. And so knowing which of those two categories an observation falls in might change how we kind of use this variable to model um, the response. So we know that if we're looking at, say, this foreign category, the relationship between predictor and response might look more like this. But if we're looking at the domestic category, then the relationship between predictor and response might look more like this. So that means that there's kind of a, a, an interaction between this predictor and this categorical predictor. Um, and so that's, again, something that we'll talk about a lot more um, in a later chapter. Um, but, but it just kind of goes in this question of what is the form of our model going to take? What terms are we including in different things like that? Um, transformations will also be talked about in a later chapter as well. What do we do when our variance is not constant, when maybe the relationship doesn't appear strictly linear? Um, what can we do? Um, and then these equations over here are just kind of highlighting the fact of um, if I have some response variable y and I have some information represented in these different predictors, I'm choosing which predictors to include. Do I include the first one? Do I include the second one? Do I include all of them? Do I include some of them? Um, right, those are issues of form. And then lastly, um, fit. Again, we've already kind of discussed this as much as we need to. We're um, pretty much always using a least squares method approach to fitting our model. Uh, we don't have to. There's other ways that you could fit a model without using least squares. Um, a common method would be kind of this um, least absolute deviation method here. So just kind of this idea um, that, um, sorry, I just like clicked something weird on my iPad. Okay, um, so, so this kind of least absolute deviation method. So instead of taking the squared 
uh, deviations or squared residuals, we kind of take the, um, the absolute residuals, add them up, and find the parameters that minimize that. And technically, that, that's a little bit different. It seems like they should be doing, like, like at surface, it might seem like the same thing, but, but squaring actually is going to uh, kind of incur a larger penalty for outlier values than, say, the absolute deviation method. So I only bring that up not because we necessarily care a lot about this, um, but just to kind of highlight that um, there is not an objectively right way to find your, your best fitting um, predictions for the parameters. It's, that is also a choice. Um, however, we use least squares in this class, and that is what most folks would use in most contexts. All right, so just kind of a summary. Um, so family is something that we kind of default on this class. We're doing linear modeling. We're using a parametric approach. We've already discussed the fit issue. Least squares is kind of our, our method going forward. So form is really the thing that we're going to be focusing on a lot more as something that we take a lot more choice in, especially in this course. So that's going to be kind of coming up in some of these uh, next videos.